So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about the integral test. So the integral test is one of the tests that we can use to determine whether a series converges or diverges. So in particular, if f is a continuous, positive, decreasing function on this interval from 1 to infinity, and a sub n equals f of n, in other words, the terms that form our series are given by the values of f at integers, then the series from n equals 1 to infinity, a sub n, converges if the improper integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx converges. Likewise, the series diverges if the same in improper integral diverges. In other words, this series converges or diverges just as this improper integral converges or diverges. Let's take a look at an example. Does the series from n equals 1 to infinity, 3n over n squared plus 8 converge? So note that if we set f of x equal essentially to this expression, only with x in place of n, this equals 3x over x squared plus 8. Then a sub n equals f of n, right, where a sub n is this expression. This is positive for all the values we care about. We care about positive values of x. Continuous, decreasing. So we can apply the integral test, and we'll look at the improper integral from 1 to infinity of f of x. So the improper integral 3x over x squared plus 8 dx. So this equals, by definition of an improper integral, the limit as b goes to infinity, integral from 1 to b, 3x over x squared plus 8 dx. Now, how are we going to deal with this? We have x squared plus 8 on the bottom, almost the derivative of x squared plus 8 on the top, so let's use u substitution. So let's set u equal to x squared plus 8, then du equals 2x dx. What we really want to substitute for, though, is 3x dx, so let's multiply everything here by 3 halves. So 3 halves du equals 3x dx. Now, we have to worry about changing the limits of integration also. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity. Now, when x equals 1, u equals 9. And when we plug in b, well, we get b squared plus 8. And maybe I, I should use a different letter here. But as x goes to infinity, so does u. And the only thing we care about is that this upper limit of integration, in this case, is going to infinity. After the u substitution, we still have something going to infinity. So we can leave that as b. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity, integral from 9 to b, 3 halves times 1 over u du. So this, using an antiderivative, we get the limit as b goes to infinity, 3 halves times the natural log of u. And notice that we don't need to worry about absolute value around the u because it's positive for all the values that we care about. It's this thing evaluated from 9 to b. And when we evaluate this at 9, we get some number. When we evaluate it at b, and send b off to infinity, this thing goes to infinity. So this is infinity. So by the integral test, the series from n equals 1 to infinity, 3n over n squared plus 8 diverges, right? 
This improper integral is, inf is infinite, meaning it diverges, so the series diverges. Let's take a look at another example. Does the series from n equals 1 to infinity e to the 1 over n all over n squared converge? Well, we'll do the same thing. We have an associated function e to the 1 over x all over x squared. So we'll look at the improper integral from 1 to infinity e to the 1 over x over x squared dx positive, continuous, decreasing. So this, by definition of an improper integral, is the limit as b goes to infinity, integral from 1 to b, e to the 1 over x over x squared dx. Now let's do another u substitution. Here we have a good candidate for u in the 1 over x because we see 1 over x squared, which is just about the derivative of 1 over x. So let's set u equal to 1 over x. Then du is negative 1 over x squared dx. So this, well let's write the antiderivative part first. We have e to the u, and then we have a negative x squared dx. We have positive, uh, sorry, negative 1 over x squared dx positive 1 over x squared dx. So this whole thing here, uh, the, the 1 over x squared dx part is equal to negative du. So let's just throw a negative sign in front of the e to the u and put a du here. So now we have to worry about our limits of integration. So let's put them in terms of u. Well, when x equals 1, we have, we have u equals 1 over 1, so that's just 1. But what about the upper limit of integration? We're sending b off to infinity. So we want this, we want the, uh, the upper limit of integration here to be something getting larger and larger. Well, when x gets larger and larger, u gets smaller and smaller. u approaches 0. So what we want here is the limit as b approaches 0, integral from 1 to 0, negative e to the u du. Right, so this is what results when we change our limits of integration from being in terms of x to being in terms of u. Well, we can find an antiderivative of this quite nicely. So we get the limit as b approaches 0 of just negative e to the u. And we're evaluating this from 1 to b. When we plug b in for u and send it to 0, we get negative e to the 0. That is just negative 1. And when we plug in 1, we get negative e to the 1, which is just negative e. So minus negative e, which is plus e. So this improper integral converges to negative 1 plus e, which means that this series converges. So by the integral test, The series from n equals 1 to infinity, e to the 1 over n over n squared converges. Now it's very important to note that the integral test doesn't tell you the value of this series. In particular, the value of this series is not negative 1 plus e. All we know from the integral test is that this series converges because this improper integral converges. So I'll leave you with a question. Does the series from n equals 1 to infinity, 3n over n squared minus 8 converge? Now this looks a lot like the first example that we did, except instead of n squared plus 8, it's n squared minus 8. So think about how if at all, you can apply the integral test to determine whether or not this series converges.